Good morning everybody, my name's Elaine and I'm Ellie Welly Stitcher, both here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. This is a channel predominantly about cross stitch. I do also talk a bit about books, sometimes I talk a bit about knitting as well, um, but I have no knitting to show you today. I do have books however. So good morning, how are we all? It's a bit of a grey old day here. Yeah, it's quite early in the morning. It's Saturday morning. Um, it's very mild, actually. In fact, I'm quite warm in the jumper that I've got on. But yeah, it's a bit of a grey old day. So if the lighting's not the best, I do apologise. I would put the overhead light on, but to be honest, it's quite, um, it's not a very powerful light and it probably wouldn't make very much difference. So I won't bother with that. Right, what have I got for you today? So I haven't got any finishes to show you today. I have got my whip update. I have got a little bit of haul, not very much this time. I think we had plenty of that last time. Uh, I've got a book review, well more than one book actually. I've read several books since I last saw you. Um, and I've got a bit of a life update as well. So, and I've also got the result of my giveaway from my last video. Okay, right, I'm going to apologise in advance. If I get a coughing fit, I will have to pause this video. So, since I last saw you, I was quite ill. Um, I think it was the week... It may have been the week after I filmed Floss Tube, actually. Yeah, the following weekend. Um, I'll do this bit. This is a bit of a life update as well, but it kind of explains where I'm at with my whips too, if you see what I mean. We might be a bit all over the place, but you were used to that from me by now, I think. So, yeah, so um, sort of a week went by after my last video, which was fine. And then... I didn't, I wasn't particularly well on the Saturday. I, I thought I'd got another cold coming because I was so bunged up, seriously. And uh, and I could barely breathe. I was, you know, I was so congested, it was awful. And, uh, and I thought, God, you know, how many more colds can I get this year, seriously? Um, and then on the Sunday, I didn't feel at all good, actually. And I thought, oh, it looks like I am getting another cold. Although my nose wasn't bunged up on the Sunday. It, that seemed to have cleared. Anyway, Monday morning, got up to go to work, got up, dragged myself into the shower, dragged the dogs round the fields for their walk. And they had a shortened walk to what they normally would get. And basically I went back to bed. I thought I just, I can't face work today. I just can't. I had a raging temperature. I couldn't stop, my chest was dreadful. I couldn't stop coughing. Um, and I thought, yeah, this is a bit more than a cold actually. And uh, I then spent, uh, I didn't get up. I got up Wednesday afternoon for a couple of hours um, and then went back to bed same again on Thursday and I didn't start to really feel better better until the Friday so yeah so not much stitching happened that week I did do some there was a couple of days where I did none because I just didn't want to if I'm really honest I didn't feel well enough to stitch at all um, I did read quite a lot so I slept a lot but when I was awake I laid in bed and read books basically. So I have got quite a reading update for you. Anyway, I'm glad to say that apart from the remnants of what was a really nasty cough, um, I, I'm, I'm completely better now and I feel tons better. Right, okay, that was a bit of my, my update for you, my life update. Okay, so I'll sh start off by showing you where I got to in January with my book of days. So here's where we finished up. So you can see I ended up with quite a lot of 
a lot of penguins and wintery stickers on this one um and yeah i got ill on the sunday here on the 29th and then i didn't stitch on the 30th or the 31st i'm not one of these people i've never stitched in bed um i don't know why i just haven't to be honest and but i don't think even even though i was laying in bed i didn't want to stitch i just didn't it's the first time I've ever felt like I didn't want to stitch. So I didn't stitch at all for those two days. So that's where we ended up in January. And um, with regards to whip go for January, the whip go numbers were six and 10, and I completed both of those. So six was to stitch on a BAP for five days. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, BAP stands for Big Ass Project. Um, and number 10 was to stitch on summer for five days. So I did do both of those. So the bat that I chose to stitch on was Salem's Witch Hunt, which I finished. I still haven't FFO'd that, guys. Um, I told you in my last video that I wasn't really... I'm going to finish it as a wall hanging, and I wasn't happy with the backing fabric that I chose for it. Um, so I actually changed that, and I've got some different fabric for it now. So I know I've got all the bits to finish it, but I just haven't finished it. <laughs> it will be finished soon. I just, yeah, I haven't had the energy for finishing. And I thought I might wait. I've, got, I've potentially got another couple of finishes soon. So I might wait a minute until I've finished those as well and then have a bit of a FFO in type day. Um, yeah, so I did complete both my whip go numbers for January. The other one, like I say, was stitch on summer for five days. And I did that too. And I'll show you the results of that as we go through my whips. So um, here we are now with February. So February, the month of love. <laughs> so consequently, I have put lots of stickers in so far that are related to hearts and love and I've got a love train down the bottom here um, and I have stitched every day so far in February so on the 1st of February which was one of my sick days um, I actually did pick up a project I only put about 50 stitches in it that was all the effort I could manage but I did I did stitch a little bit so I have st stitched so far every day in February. So quite pleased about that. Um, and the numbers that were called February's whip go were seven and 11, which is really exciting <laughs> because number seven for me was stitch on a winter project for five days. Um, and I've been doing that. And number 11 was a stitch on an autumn project for five days. And I've actually completed that goal um, already. So I'm really pleased about that too. So we'll see that as we go through. So that's where we are with um, my book of days and whip go. Right, let's get into my whips, shall we? So I'll show you the full coverage that I've worked on first, and then I'll show you everything else, okay? Right. Um, Let's start with this one. So the first one that I'm going to show you, I only did um, a couple of evenings on this. Sorry, I, I should have, looking around, I should have just kept my book out because I've got the, I do record the amount of stitches if it's in Pattern Keeper in my book a day. So I did do two evenings on this one. So this is simple pleasures um it's charted by pain free crafts and the artworks by chris dunn i'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished uh, and also where it was last time and it was a very tiny start last time and um I've put 
440 stitches into this since you last saw it. Here it is now. So not a lot to see at the minute, just started in that top left corner. Um, and I will just say I had a little bit of happy mail, which was just so, so kind of one of my viewers. So um, I think I mentioned either in my last video or the one before that, that I'd kitted this up and I'd got all of the DMC that I needed except one. And I do not know why, how I managed to miss that I hadn't got DMC number eight, which of course I started stitching this corner and number eight came up almost straight away and I realized I hadn't got it. So obviously I was gonna go and buy it, but you know what it's like, you're not gonna just buy one skein of DMC, are you? You know, other things are gonna fall into your basket, so to speak. So um, so I was gonna buy it and then I thought, well, maybe next time I'm at a hobby craft, I could pop in and see if they've got it. Um, but Stitchy Quinn, who's um, Stitchy Quinn on Instagram, um, and one of my viewers got in touch with me and said, I've got a spare skein of number eight, would you like it? How nice is that? How lovely was that? So thank you very, very much, Stitchy Quinn. Um, that was just so generous of you. So, so kind, thank you. So I now have the full set of DMCs that I need to complete this project. Not that it's anywhere near complete, <laughs> obviously. Um, so, you know, we are in all these browns at the top here at the minute. But thank you so very much to my very kind lady that sent me that skein of DMC. Because I can now go ahead and stitch in these, these um, some of the little ninjury stitches you can see in there. They are DMC8. So, yeah. So this is a 28 count easy guide and I am stitching this one one over one full cross. Okay, and that's my, the needle minders, one of Agnes little minders. So that's where we are with that one. So I did a little tiny bit more on that one. Uh, bung those up there, I think actually. Right, then the next one that I had out was this one. Oops. So again, this one I only had out for two evenings. Um, so this one is a Hade, Heaven and Earth Design. Um, this is Magic Forest and the artwork is by Kiro Marchetti. And um, I, like I say, stitched two evenings on this. So I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time. Now you probably aren't gonna notice much difference with this one. So I did three, five, 600 stitches on this so this is where we are with it now so I've, I've still been I've filled pretty much all of I had a few ninja stitches around the bird that needed to be filled in and I've done that and then I sort of come down this way a little bit now um, so yeah, not much difference you can see, but there's 600 stitches more in it. Progress is progress, right? So this one I'm stitching uh, on 28 count, easy guy. But this one's two over one tenth stitch. So yeah, that's where we are with Magic Forest. So quite pleased to have got that one out again. I do need to get this one out a bit more because it's my biggest project um there's 400,000 stitches all together in this and I would like to finish it you know one of these days so I do need to crack on a bit more with that one right then the next two I'm going to show you were a bit yeah not not the greatest um 
progress, I have to say, Bob. But, you know, progress is progress, so I will show them to you. Um, so the next one I'm going to show you is also from Pain Free Crafts. Um, and the artwork on this one is by Chris Dunn. This is Feast. I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and also where you saw it last time. And you're not going to notice any difference on this. So I'd picked out this one to stitch on on the Sunday. I really started to feel ill. And um, and I put 50 stitches into it. That's how ill I felt. Um, so all I did was filled in a few more of the ninja stitches on their hair's face. And then, yeah, 50 stitches in and I had to put it down. I just, and go to bed actually. I think it was about half five in the evening. And I said to my husband, I've had enough, I've got to go to bed. He was like, blimey. I was like, I oh, know, I can't. I need to go and sleep it off. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out like that, but never mind. So this one is stitched on 28 count easy guide. And uh, this is one over one full cross. And I really want to get back to this one. You know, 50 stitches is a bit, a bit rubbish, isn't it? Right, while I'm at it, actually, talking of Chris Dunn, so... In my last video, I spoke about doing a bit of a Chris Dunn sal, and I asked you guys if you would come up with some suggestions as to a hashtag that we could use on Instagram um, for a Chris Dunn sal. And you guys came up with some really good ones. And the one I've gone with, and I have set it up as a hashtag, and a couple of you have posted your Chris Dunn pieces on there, which is extremely enabling, guys, I have to say. Um, it's hashtag let's get the Dunn's done sale, which I just thought was brilliant. I think Mrs. Miggins came up with that one, so thank you very much for that. So, yeah, hashtag let's get the Dunn's done. Um, so if you're stitching a Chris Dunn, um, and you'd like to share your progress with us, particularly me, because I love all the Chris Dunn's, please use that hashtag. Um, it doesn't matter which Chris Dunn it is. They're all amazing anyway. Um, but yeah, I'd really love to see them. So show us your Chris Dunn's. Um, so yeah, the only one I've put on there so far is cheese delivery. Uh, but I will, as I work on the others, I'll, I'll try and remember, I'm not great at Instagram, but I'll try and remember to take pictures and put them on there. Right, okay, the next one I worked on also didn't get an awful lot of attention. Um, so while I wasn't very well, um, although I did, after that couple of days where I didn't stitch at all, I did then start to pick up um, a bit of stitching again. But I really, I found it a little difficult to get into full coverage. Um, so last Sunday, I was still sort of recovering um, from my illness. And I picked up um, another one by Pain Free Crafts. So this is Blackberry Dragon. The artwork's by Stanley Morrison. Again, I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and also where you saw it last time. And this is where it is now. Still haven't found a dragon on this one yet, guys. I've been filling in a lot on this moon up here, actually. But I only did 130 stitches on this and I just wasn't in the mood. So I put it down. So, excuse me, again, this one is um, 28 count easy guide and this is two over one, 10 stitch. So yeah, not a great amount of stitching, but a little bit. So that's where we are with Blackberry Dragon. 
and um, I'm sure most of you watch Darren at Dizzy Stitcher, but Darren and I um, are hosting that um, Stitch Along for Blackberry Dragon, well any stunning Morrison Dragon actually. Um, so, and quite a lot of people are stitching their dragons. And Darren's doing the same dragon as me and he's been working on the dragon's face and it really is looking amazing. So, so if you want to see Blackberry Dragon that's in a bit of a different place to mine, go and check out Darren's because it looks really good. Right, and then my final full coverage that I worked on um, and I'd, I'd stitched my goal on this for January, which was a stitch, 5,000 stitches. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, I put it down for the rest of January. Uh, so I've only picked this up again at the beginning of February. So this is um, Cheese Delivery. And the artwork is by Chris Dunn. And it's charted by Pain Free Crafts. And again, I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time. And so far this month, I've stitched 2,200 stitches on this one. And this is where it's at now. So with cheese delivery, um, I've mucked about, mucked about a bit all over the place, really. So I did some more over here and under here, and predominantly I've worked over here. I bought down this side here a bit, and I've been filling in the back of the the back of the van. Is what I've predominantly worked on since you last saw it. So I've now completed. Uh, just over 71,000 stitches on this um, and we are currently at just over 58% so yeah actually um, Lauren at Flossabilities has just showed her FFO of cheese delivery and wise old owl and uh, yeah they look amazing framed up absolutely amazing and it has spurred me on with mine. Not that this one requires much spurring on, to be fair, because I really love stitching it. So, yeah, really love it. So, yeah, so 2,200 and something stitches I've done on this one. So not finished with it for this month yet, because, you know, my goal is to do 5,000 a month on cheese delivery. So, yeah, I will be back on this one on Monday, no doubt. And excitingly enough, guys, I am coming to the end of some of the colours on this. So I am colour complete in a few. I haven't quite yet, but I'm th I think possibly by my next video, I might have colour completed a couple of colours. So that's exciting, isn't it? Well, I think it is anyway, little things. Right, that's all the full coverage that I've worked on. So now I'll show you a bit of everything else, really. So um, I'll show you this one next. So um, I, while, uh, while I, after I filmed my last video, um, I decided to bring out Louisa Barney while I was waiting for my video to upload to YouTube. Um, and I hadn't stitched on Louisa for a little while actually. So it was really nice to bring her out again. So this is what Louisa Barney looks like um, when it's finished. So this is a chart by Reflé de Soir. And this is Louisa Barney 1892. I will put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And I am doing this one as part of the stitch along that is hosted by Kim, a contented needle worker. Um, so 
there's a whole variety of people that are stitching on Reflé de Soir charts. Um, the hashtag is Reflé de Soir Sal, I think. Um, I will put the details below. Um, here's where I am with my nail. So I only had this out for one afternoon and I finished one of the flowers down here and I started coming across this way now. So this one I'm stitching on 36 count smoky blue by Zweigart and I'm stitching this using the suggested DMC conversion. So um, this is charted for Soir d'Alger silks and I've gone with the DMC. There's an awful lot of colours in this chart, an awful lot. Um, yeah, you can see. And I, I just couldn't justify the expense of the silks. So, um, so yeah, actually Reflet de Soir has just brought out a new chart. Um, can't remember what it's called now. It's Blanche something. Oh my God, it's fabulous. I will be purchasing it. I will. So, um, yeah, but I need to crack on with this one first. So, yeah, quite pleased with how Louise is coming along. And I'm sorry if I've gone a bit croaky. It's where I keep coughing. Uh, yeah, I, I just keep it. My, my voice hasn't quite recovered from it yet. Okay, uh, next one. So the next one I worked on for a little while, actually, was this one. Um, this was, I bought this out just one afternoon, just before I was ill, actually. Um, so this one is the Pink House Sampler by Plum Street Samplers. This is what it looks like when it's finished. And I put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And this is a stitch long that I am doing um, with Stitchy Sally. Uh, and Sally is doing great guns on her, it's much better than me. Um, so here I am so far with mine, all I've done is a little bit more of the border. Um, that's it, that's all I've done. Uh, so this is on 36 count uh, platinum from Zweigart and I'm using all the called for colours. They're really pretty pinks. Oh no, I'm not using all the called for. I'm not, I lie. So I'm using most of the overdyes in the called for but there was one I didn't have, which was um, Weed Style Works Brick. I uh, didn't have it, so I swapped it out for uh, Gentle Arts Ruby Slipper. And, and I think it looks absolutely fine with that, actually. The Ruby Slipper is the, the darker red. So, yeah. So, I'm still working on the border on mine, Sally. So, that yeah, this is a stitch along that I'm doing with Sally. It's the, um, I think it's hashtag, the, oh, I'm rubbish at remembering hashtags. I will put the hashtag in the show notes. It's the big ass pink house sampler sale or something like that. It's quite amusing anyway. Sally came up with it. It was great, great idea for a hashtag. Right, so that's my pink house. Sally started with the house on her, so you can see hers from a different perspective to mine. Okay, then the next one that I worked on, and I only worked on this one for one afternoon, but I haven't had it out for ages, and I really just was in the mood for stitching on her, really. Um, so this is my fancy lady. So this is Lady of Mystery by Mirabilia. That's what it looks like when it's finished. And I will put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And 
and this is what she looks like now. So I'm still working on this big trace. I've moved her over a little bit in the key snap while I'm working over this side. But as you can see, excitingly, I am really making quite good headway now down this side. I'm not beading as I go. I'll do the beading at the end. I am back stitching as I go. Um, so yeah, this is on 28 count uh, cream from Zweigart, 28 count even weave this is, as opposed to linen. And I am using all of the called for colours except the black. So I swapped the black out for Anchor 403 instead of 310. Um, I can't honestly say I prefer it. Um, I will in the future stick with 310, I think. I know a lot of people don't like 310, they don't like the coverage it gives, but I do. Um, black, the anchor black is a little bit fluffier. Uh, it's okay, it's okay actually, I don't mind stitching with it at all. But yeah, I, I would choose to go with the DMC. So this is mostly stitched in DMC with the exception of two Karen Water Lilies. So yeah, I do think, you know, one more good stitchy session on this and then I can move this and we can start doing her big skirt down the bottom there. So yeah, quite pleased with her actually. So that is my Mirabilia. So she only had one stitchy session as well. Right, then the next one that I worked on was one of my whip go goals for January, um, which was a stitch on summer for five days. So I haven't got many summer projects. I need to, I need to get some more, I think. I have got one waiting in the wings, but I'm waiting to finish this one before I introduce that one, so to speak. So this is Blackbird Design Strawberry Fields Forever. Loads of people have stitched this. It's a very popular chart. This is what it looks like when it's finished. And I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And uh, the, oh, you're not gonna get the full impact of this because I have it is down in the cue snap a little bit. But this is where I am with it now. So I have finished all the bottom with the wall and all that sort of thing. But so I've been, I've brought the border up and round the top part here. So this is the top of the piece. Put this birdie in, put this little basket in over here. So pretty much I've got a few doodads and things in amongst this strawberry plant to do. And obviously the other side of this border. But this isn't far off a finish now. Yay! Yes, not far off a finished. So I'm stitching this on uh, 32 count grey by Weeks Dye Works. And I used all of the called for um, floss, which was a mix of Gentle Arts, um, Weeks Dye Works and Classic Colour Works. And um, yeah, I do like it. I, it's getting quite exciting now <laughs> to think that it's nearly finished. So yeah, pleased with that one. So I'm not going to say next time you see it, it will be finished, but I don't think it's going to be too far off. So that's that one. And then um, I'll show you this one next. So the next one I worked on is um, another stitch long that I'm doing with some of the ladies from the Essex Needles Retreat. So this is a Morris Dancer by GGR. Um, this is the original sampler of what it looks like. Never really shows, does it justice, this one. Um, so I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And here I am with it 
currently. So you're not getting the full effect because I have moved it to, I'm using, I'm still stitching on it in a minute. So it is still in the queue snap at the moment. Um, so since I last saw you, I've sat and stitched the word in down here and I've been carrying on with the borders up here. Um, and I have, apart from the heart around the word in here, I have, I'm on the last page of the top row now, which is exciting. So I have every intention of getting across the top row by next time you see me. So yeah, really pleased with this. So I'm stitching this on 36 count um, linen that I dyed myself and I'm using uh, mostly the DMC conversion on this apart from a couple of the overdyed. So I have used the overdyed on the cherubs um, and I have got a couple of the other overdyeds to use. But yeah, I, I do like stitching this. And um, the other ladies who are all taking part in the stitch along are all in a variety of different places. So um, Janet started hers over this side and is going that way. And then um, Kirsty has done all around the border and she's got various bits that she's now, so she's done the cherubs, um, but she's done various other bits of the sampler now as well. Uh, Pen, so Penelope underscore pins, she's done loads actually. Um, so she's done, she's been brave and, and filled in around the heart, which I've yet to do and hers looks awesome. And then Bronte Stitcher, she's done absolutely tons to hers, much more than anybody else, I think. So, yeah, so I think actually I'm probably slightly behind everybody else now. So I need to need to put a bit of work into this one. But I think they're all aiming to finish in September uh, when they go to the Great British Sampler weekend. Um and and I don't mine's not going to be finished by September. I know that. So, but never mind. Right. So that's that one. Okay. And then finally, uh, my two Whipgo projects that I'm working on for February. So as I said earlier, um, the numbers called for this month were seven and eleven seven for me was to work on a winter project for five days and so far i have done two stitchy sessions by days i mean you know not whole days just stitchy sessions so uh, my winter project i chose to work on is 1831 christmas by plum street samplers this is what it looks like when it's finished so it's only small this one but it's, it's cute. I really like it. And I'll put a picture in the way you saw it last time. And this is where I am with it now. So I've been, as you can see, working on the sheet basically. So the sheep's coming along quite nicely now. This I am stitching on 32 count vintage country mocha and I am using all of the called for colours. So yeah, that's my sheep. Rather cute. So I've got another three days to do on that one. Um, and then the final project that I worked on um, and I have completed this one for this month, although I think it's going to get a little bit more stitchy time. So the autumn project I decided to work on is this one. So this is Autumn by the Cricut Collection. I love the stitchiness, love it. So I have done five days or five stitchy sessions on this. And um, I'll put a picture in where you saw it last time, hopefully. Uh, 
and this is where we are with it now. So I finished off the U, uh, which I hadn't done last time, and obviously, as you can see, I've started on the M. In fact, I'm not far off finishing the M. I've got a bit, a bit more to do in here, and then like the bull rushes at the top, um, and then I could move on to the next bit. So I'm stitching this on 28 count opalescent linen in the colourway Midas by Chromatic Alchemy and I am using um, all the called for DMCs and there's a lot of them. But yeah, I really, really, really like stitching this very much. So yeah. It was a pleasure. When 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 autumn came up as a number on Whipco, I was like, oh yes, I know exactly which project I'm gonna get out. So that was that one. And that guys is all of my stitchy progress to show you. So yeah, not not too bad considering you know there was a few days there where really not much stitching happened because I just yeah, I really wasn't. Well, so I either didn't stitch at all or it was literally just a few handful of stitches. Okay, so moving on to haul, let's do that next. So I haven't got hardly any haul, you know, I, I had quite a lot last time that I showed you because I'd been to the uh, Essex Needles retreat stitched and chat day and um, yeah, done some serious purchasing there, <laughs> um, plus some serious purchasing online. Um, I do have, there are a couple of charts that I want to purchase. Um, there's a couple of things from the previews of Nashville that I've seen that I really quite like. Um, I have just this morning seen um, Brenda Gervais new releases um, that she's going to release next month and I love both of those gorgeous 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 um, I don't think she's going to market um, I think there's a few designers that aren't going to market actually um, but that are doing some release releases anyway but but yeah there's a few charts out there I like so um, I've still got my patchwork rabbit gift voucher that was very kindly gifted to me. So I might wait until those new releases come out and then buy a couple of charts. Um, but I am going to put an order in with one, two, three stitch because there's a chart that I cannot find anywhere in the UK. Um, and I really want to stitch it and it's a summary one. So, uh, so I haven't done it yet, but I will put an order in with one two three stitch so you probably won't see that next video but probably will the video after right we digress let me show you my little bits of haul so i did get uh a new needle minder from agnes little minders so she bought out her wintry ones and this time i bought one of her snowflakey type ones so Hopefully you can see that. Isn't it pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah. Every time I, I say, no, I don't need any more of her needle miners. And then she brings them out and I have to have a new one. So, yeah. I didn't think I'd got one this time, actually. I was on um, a Zoom call with uh, Teresa Little Stitcher and Gina Stitches. And um, and we were all distracted by <laughs> by uh, Agnes putting up her latest collection, and I thought I'd mucked it up and I hadn't got one, but and then it turned out I had. So so that was that was good. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I haven't decided what project I want to put that one on yet, but there will be a project. And then um. I think Crafting Kirsty showed these a long time ago on Instagram and I really liked them. Um, but they were out of stock at the time. But then I saw they came back in stock again, so I ordered them. I've only taken one out and I haven't taken it out of the bag because 
I don't want to display these until nearer autumn and Halloween. But these are from, I think it's called the old gingerbread shop. Again, I'll, um, it's on Etsy and I'll, I'll, I'll put them down below. But, um, but yeah, I bought these three, which is the three of these. I've only got one out to show you, but they're three really primitive witches made in black wax. And they're gorgeous. I love them. I can't wait to display them come the come the winter, but yeah, really sweet. She, uh, Mama loves you, GB. Bought a pair of um, a pair of primitive witch boots actually from this lady because I was tempted to get those as well. But at the minute, I just bought the three little. There's three of these uh, in case I didn't say. But yeah, I love them. Absolutely love them. Love me a bit of prim stuff anyway, but can't wait to display those. And then I bought a project bag. I have no business buying any project bags, people, because I have bought a lot of them quite recently. Um, but I saw this one, I really loved it. And I really wanted one of this lady's bags because um, they always look amazing. So this is the bag that I bought and it is beautiful. It is beautifully made. It's a really nice size. It was a really good price. Um, it's just, it's lovely, absolutely lovely. It's my contrast fabric inside. Uh, I haven't got anything in this one yet because I wanted to show it to you. Um, I have got a couple of empty project bags now that I can put things in. But this is from Pauline at So Be Bags. Again, I will put her below. So she sells these bags on Instagram. Um, they're not all the same as this. They're whatever fabric she's got available at the time. She has got a couple up on Insta at the moment. Well, they may not be now because her bags do sell pretty quick. Um, I have just ordered another bag from her, um, which I will show you on my next video. But honestly, so be bags, Pauline, check out her bags because they are absolutely lovely. Like I say, she's got um, a couple on there at the moment with Blackbird fabric as well, which were really nice. And I was tempted, but I have got a couple of Blackbird bags. But yeah, yeah, so really good price these really good and um, yeah like I say I am very 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 happy with my bag thank you very much Pauline can't wait to get the next one off of you so yeah I've just got to put some projects in them now haven't I can't have empty project bags that's terrible and I must have I think I've got about two or three at the moment that I haven't got a project in so yeah need to put something in those Right, I am going to do my giveaway winners. And I've done a separate little video for that. So if you remember on my last video, I asked you to, we were doing my 1500 subscriber celebration um, and I did a giveaway for it of two pain-free craft PDFs, okay? Which they can be anyone's of your choice. Um, and yeah, so I did, um, I borrowed Alexa earlier to draw two numbers for me. So I did it a bit different this time. Instead of just going with random comment picker and asking you to pick a word, um, I asked you to share with me your favourite wit to work on. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed doing that. It was brilliant. Um, I did reply to all of your comments. I gave all of you a number. I went and had a look at the charts that I hadn't seen before, which there's some serious enabling gone on there, guys. There's a few that I've added to my uh, wish list that, yeah, were very, very good indeed. What fabulous projects you, you're all stitching. And I so enjoyed doing that exercise because, um, you know, I really felt that it was 
just brilliant to interact with you um, and get all your comments and you know I share my whips with you and it was really lovely that you shared what you were working on with me so thank you thank you very much um, I'm going to pop the video in here uh, that I took in my kitchen just before I started filming this um, with my two winners so hopefully you'll see that and then you'll come back to me hi guys and here we are in my kitchen with alexa and we're gonna do the giveaway from my last video to celebrate the fact that i've got to 1500 subscribers so thank you very much for that so i've responded to everybody who left me a comment i asked you to leave a comment telling me what your favourite whip is to work on and the response was fantastic and I have been and had a look um, at all of the whips that you told me that you're working on amazing amazing I shouldn't have asked really because yeah that was a very enabling <laughs> that was an, an enabling exercise anyway I had over here I have got um, 83 comments from you lovely lovely people um, where you described to me your um, whips and I gave you all a number for my draw um, I commented back to you so here we are in my kitchen with Alexa so I don't normally film in here because as you can see the lights not the best actually perhaps should have put the lights on but still never mind we're only going to be here in a minute while we talk to Alexa. So, good morning, Alexa. Oh, she doesn't want to talk to me. There had to be a hiccup, didn't they? Alexa, give me a random number between 1 and 83. Here's a number between 1 and 83. It's 58. Okay. So... That's our first number, 58. So over here, 58 is Pam Lacey. Hopefully you can see this, Pam. 58, there's my, my finger there. 58, Pam Lacey. Congratulations, Pam. So you've won a chart from Pain Free Crafts. If you'd like to pick a PDF, if you haven't already got an account with um, pain free crafts please set yourself up with one um, and then please get in touch with me send me your email you can either dm me on instagram or my uh, email address is in the show notes below so give me your email tell me which chart you want and i'll get that sent across to you so congratulations pam okay so I was giving away two, so let's do the second one. Alexa, give me a number between 1 and 83. Here's a number between 1 and 83. It's 21. Okay, so 21. 21 is Lorraine's underscore cross underscore stitch. So Lorraine's cross stitch. There we go, 21. Lorraine's cross stitch. So Lorraine, if you could get in touch with me as well, again, please set yourself up with a pain free craft account if you haven't already got one. It's free to do. Um, and then if you could tell me which chart you want and give me your email address, then I will get that sent to you as a rack, random act of kindness. OK, everybody, you've had a little look at my kitchen now. There you go. <laughs> So uh, we'll go back to the main video. See you all in a minute. Right, so hopefully um, you, you know now who my two winners are. So congratulations to Pam and Lorraine. Uh, if you could please get in touch with me on either Instagram or email me with your email and the chart that you would like. Um, I can't wait to find out which chart you pick. So yeah, get in touch with me for that one. Okay, so that is my giveaway. I haven't got a giveaway this time. Uh, we maybe do one, maybe do one next time. The post seems to be settling down a bit in the UK now. 
and we can post internationally again. So I think what I might do on my next video, we'll do a, a physical giveaway rather than a PDF. So yeah, okay, that's my giveaway. Right, um, all I've got left is uh, books and um, a life update. Oh, and a bit of an apology from my last video. So in my last video, I had a couple of things as part of my haul that I said I was going to show you, and then I didn't. And one of my viewers very kindly pointed out to me <laughs> that I hadn't shown it to you. So first of all, I told you that I'd purchased um, a Hayde Fancy Duck to take part in um, Teresa Little Stitch's Fancy Duck Sale in March. Um, and I will put the picture of the duck that I chose in here. So the one that I chose is called Accessorise. So this is charted by Haid um, and the artwork is by Gordon Fitcham. So that's the duck that I am going to stitch as per, part of Teresa's fancy duck sale. And the other thing that I failed to show you in my last video, having talked about it, was that I had purchased a merchant chest for my craft room um, that I could you know, be a bit more organized with and store um, some fa my fabrics and that kind of thing. Um, so I took a picture of it and then completely forgot when I was editing, I skipped ahead and uh, forgot to put the picture in. So I will put that picture in here for you as well. So apologies for missing them out last time. Right, okay, I'm going to do my life update bit and then I'm going to do my books. So anybody who's not interested in those things, um, thanks for coming along and seeing my whip update. And um, thank you to the new subscribers I've had because I picked up quite a few since my last video. So hello and welcome to um, all the new people. And um, um, as always, welcome back to all my regulars. Um, you know how much I appreciate you guys. So, right life update so obviously i was ill we've been through all that bit um and uh it was a bit of a disaster weekend really that weekend that i started to feel ill so on the um on the sunday my husband had gone to a um a, a fishing uh show so I don't get a Sunday on my own very often, but that particular Sunday I had on my own. So he'd gone to uh, the fishing show and I was on a call with uh, Teresa, Little Stitcher. Um, we were just having a bit of a catch up around um, where we were at with retreats. and oh, We were just having a catch up and a gossip anyway, like you do. Anyway, I was stood making a cup of tea in my kitchen while I was talking to Teresa and I looked up at the ceiling and I thought what the hell is that there was a huge wet patch on the ceiling and I was like what is that so I'm talking to Ther Teresa and I'm a bit distracted then because I'm looking at this wet patch and I thought oh my god and and it was quite big, you know, it, was, it wasn't just a little wet patch, it was noticeably quite big. Now, about four years ago, um, we had a leak from a pipe in our loft and it leaked into one of my spare bedrooms. And it, we were away on holiday in the States at the time and it brought the ceiling down in our spare bedroom. Well, the mess was... So anyway, having had that happen in the past, um, I saw this big wet patch on the ceiling and I just thought, oh my God, don't tell me the ceiling's going to cave in in the kitchen. So um, 
I didn't know what to do. And I said, well, you know, what could I do, basically? So uh, it wasn't from the bathroom because it wasn't directly above where the bathroom was. So the only thing I could think where it was was in the airing cupboard. So I've gone and had a look in it. I couldn't see anything, couldn't see anything. Anyway, our airing cupboard, uh, underneath it, there's like um, a heater thing that we've never, ever used, never used it. Um, it's been there since we've been here. And um, and I thought, oh, maybe it's something underneath that, but I couldn't get to it. Anyway, uh, my husband came home and he had a look at it and he said, well, maybe it's, you know, a pipe that's connected to the bathroom or something. So I'm like having a bit of a meltdown by this point. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm sure it's got bigger since I first looked at it. I don't know what to do. So fortunately, we, we've got um, a plumber friend that does all of my plumbing. Oh, one moment, sorry. Hello, sorry about that, I am back. Um, I, the time got away with me and I didn't realise that um, that my home shopping delivery was due. So, so yeah, I've just been and put that away. So it will seem like two seconds for you, but I've been gone about 15 minutes while my shopping's gone away and um, I don't normally do this, but I've grabbed myself a quick drink as well because I could feel my throat getting worse and worse and worse. So where were we? Yes, I was telling you about my leak. So yeah, so my husband eventually came home and this patch on the ceiling was just getting worse and worse and worse and I, I just didn't know what to do. Um, so we ended up um, WhatsApping our plumber guy and, um, and kind of videoing for him like, where it was etc so it turned out anyway that um, my husband managed to get the um, this heater thing that was in the bottom of the airing cupboard managed to pull it out and one of the pipes that was connected to the heater um, that has like hot water in it had basically really corroded and so it must have been leaking for quite some time um, and, but it was like a real steady drip, 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 drip. Anyway, because it was a Sunday, my plumber was busy. He couldn't come out and do it. So we just had to put like, um, I put like a tub under it to catch the drips basically. So it didn't make the ceiling any worse. Um, and he had to come out on the Monday uh, and fix it for us. So yeah, so that was a bit of drama. It was awful. I just thought, oh my God, what if the ceiling caves in? And although uh, the plumber did say to me, he said, you know, Elaine, that it takes an awful lot of water for a ceiling to cave in. It wouldn't have happened. Anyway, fortunately it's, it's dried out now and um, we probably will have to repaint that bit of ceiling because you can see there's a bit of a watermark on the ceiling now. So, yeah, so that was a bit of drama as well on top of me being ill. And then, and then, my big bit of life news. So, um, it looks like uh, after working for 30 years for the same company, my husband is probably going to get made redundant. So... This is not bad news, people. <laughs> so, my husband's a bit younger than me, I will hasten to add. So, he's not at the point yet where he can retire. But, um, but he's also not at the point where he needs the high-flying job that he's currently got either. So, you know, those of you that have been with me any length of time, that our plan has always been that we would at some point um, up sticks and move from Essex to Innismont or Anglesey, as it's also known, um, at some point. And um, so if my husband is made redundant, it's not 100% at the minute, but it is about 90%, I would say. Um, if he gets made redundant, that, that's going to be what we do. 
So yeah, we will move to Anglesey this year, which is super exciting, super, super exciting. Uh, so yeah, like I say, you know, my, my husband doesn't need a, um, like a massively high flying job anymore. Just enough really to sort of pay the gas and electric, um, and, you know, and a bit of food and, and we'd be all right, really. So, um, yeah, so that's the plan. So, uh, he should find out for certain by, um, beginning of March if he's going to be made redundant and then if he is um, he'll actually finish uh, with his firm at the end of April um, so the, the plan is once he knows for certain um, we'll probably put our house on the market at the beginning of April um, I've got a couple of bits and pieces that need doing to it before I feel comfortable to sell it. So just cosmetic things. There's nothing major, just a bit of painting. Um, you know, like our hallway, for example, gets a lot of through traffic with the dogs. We haven't painted it now since I think it was probably about 2019 was the last time we painted it. Um, so that could do with a freshen up, basically. So we'll repaint the hall. Um, my downstairs cloakroom really needs a, some new flooring. It's not for a big area, but it, it just needs a bit of freshening up as well. So we would want to get those two little jobs done before we put the house on the market. And I'll probably um, will paint our bedroom as well, actually, because it could do with a bit of a freshen up so yeah so just those few a, a, a bit of painting just that one little job in the cloakroom downstairs that really needs doing and then we'll put the house on the market and we won't go to Anglesey and really seriously look until we've got an offer for this one so houses are selling pretty well around here at the moment um, but I estimated that you know, if we have this on the market for a couple of months and then, you know, conveyancing on top of that normally takes about three and a half months. Um, we're probably talking, probably not moving until October time at the earliest. So, so we'll miss the summer in Anglesey this year, but, but you know, yeah, you know, hopefully fingers crossed by, by, um, sort of October time, uh, like I say, about ho hopefully as will sell okay. Um, yeah, but hopefully we'll move. So yeah, so my um, Welsh spoons, my long dog sampler that, um, you know, comes out from time to time and has been on the back burner really for a little while now. Uh, yeah, we'll probably have to come out a bit more frequently if I want to get it done before we move to Wales so so yeah so that's kind of quite exciting news so it may be um, you know I'm just gonna play it by ear a little bit but if I'm gonna be doing a bit of decorating um, I might film every four weeks just for the next couple of videos instead of every three don't know We'll see how it goes because I like coming on here and having a chat with you guys. So, you know, I'll see how much stitching I can get done in amongst the painting. So, yeah, so that's that's my big bit of news, if you like. So I'll, I'll keep you informed as to how we get on with that. Um, so by my next update video, we should know for sure whether my husband's definitely going to get made redundant. Um with regards to me, so it means obviously that I wouldn't be able to carry on working at my lovely hotel. Uh, but I do want to say for any of you guys that are um, coming to any of the Essex Needles retreats that it doesn't affect any of that at all. So um, I will still continue to be the liaison, if you like, with the hotel. Um, 
Oh, we'll still run the retreats with Teresa, um, just the same as we always have. It just means that, you know, the, the times when we do a stitch and chat day are probably will stay over the night before and the night after. So, you know, because I don't think I'll be driving to, from Anglesey just for one day. Um, but I will still keep up with the Essex Needles retreats for, for definite. They will go, carry on. Um, you know, because I've still got family around Essex and Kent, so I will come back from time to time to see them anyway. Okay, so that's the, my bit of a life update. Right, I have my book review for you. So where I haven't been very well, I have read quite a lot. Um, so I, d I did another audio book as well. So, sorry, I'm just getting my Kindle to tell you what I've been reading. So, the audio book that I read, because obviously that's not on my Kindle, was a book called The Maid um, by, the author was Nita Prose. Not read anything by her before. Um, so, I'm just going to have a quick slurp of my drink. So um, it was all right. I'd give it a three out of five. Basically, it's the story of a maid in a hotel who um, comes across um, a man dead in a hotel room and kind of then the story sort of takes off from there. It was OK. It was all right. It was really, you know, eminently readable but it wasn't really my bag, if I'm honest. So I thought the plot was a little bit simplistic for me. Um, but yeah, you know, if you want a bit of light reading, then yeah, it, it was fine. It was just my audio, audio read in the car on my way home from work. Um, and it was all right. It was all right. Uh, okay, so apart from that, what have I been reading? So... Since I last saw you, uh, I can't remember if I told you I'd read the second one of the Moreland Dynasty, The Dark Rose. So you guys, it's your fault that you got me into the Moreland Dynasty, which is um, a series of books by Cynthia Harrod Eagles. I apologise, I didn't put any of the details of the books I'd read in my last um, video in the show notes. I will do that this time. It was very remiss of me. I do apologise. Sorry, I just need another quick... I don't normally drink when I'm talking to you, but my throat's getting a bit dry. And I don't like cold coffee. Right. So I read the second one of um, The Moreland Dynasty, which was The Dark Rose. Uh, which was right up my alley, this one. So this was set in the time of um, Henry VIII. Um, more specifically um, around his relationship with Anne Boleyn um, and how, um, as a result of that, uh, England started to break away from the Catholic Church so, so the book is centred really around um, Henry VIII's reign. Um, so it does go through, like, you know, his other wives. Kind of the, the background story is usually around which king or queen, or it seems to be, is on the throne at the time, so to speak. And then you've got the story about the family, the Morelands within that. So, yeah, I enjoyed the second book. I really did. Um, like I say, Henry VIII, I've read a lot of history books, both factual and fiction, around Henry VIII and his wives in the past. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed reading that. And I have moved on. I've finished the third book as well, sorry. So I finished the third book, which is called The Princeling. Um, so this one was set in the times of Elizabeth the first um, and again it deals quite a lot with the breakaway um, from Rome and and kind of really 
the real establishing of um, the Protestants in England. Uh, there's quite a bit around Scotland in this one as well and, um, and Mary Queen of Scots. So, so yeah, I really enjoyed the third book after I've not long finished that one. Uh, I haven't started the fourth book yet. It's on my list to read. So I've got the fourth book to start, which is The Oak Apple. And I will probably start that after I've finished after I finished my current read. So all, all of the Moreland Dynasty ones that I've read so far, I'd give all of them four out of five. I really like them. Right, and then I have also read, um, this again was another recommendation. This was a recommendation by Stitchy Rach that I read the Susanna Gregory books um, about uh, the physician um, Matthew Bartholomew. So I read the first one, A Plague on Both Your Houses. Uh, again, this one is set in medieval times, it's set in the 1300s, uh, and it's centred around Cambridge um, and the sort of the beginnings of Cambridge University. And Matthew Bartholomew um, is a doctor, basically who's a bit kind of radical thinking for his time. Um, you know, so he doesn't believe in, in things like um, leeching people and he believes that, you know, hygiene and cleanliness go a long way to being healthy, basically, which is kind of a bit radical for, for that particular time in history. Anyway, it, it's a murder mystery, basically, and... Um, and I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. So thank you, Rachel, for the recommend. Um, so I've read that. Uh, like I say, I really enjoyed that book. Then I felt like I needed a bit of a break from both Cynthia Harold Eagles. Um, I'd got the next Susanna Gregory to start, but I wanted to break it up a bit with something. So I read a book called The Herd by Emily Edwards. Uh, and this one, I think I read it in a day. Um, you know, this is when I was laid up in bed. And I'm going to give this one yeah, a good four out of five. I really enjoyed it. Couldn't put it down, actually. So this is a story about um, vaccination. It's fiction, but there is kind of an underlying... Um, a truth to it if you like so this is a story about um a family two families who are the two women in the story are like best best friends and how they end up falling out um because one of them doesn't believe in vaccination for a variety of reasons doesn't believe in vaccinating her child and the other one is very strongly for vaccination. And it's a, the story of what happens as a result of their different beliefs, basically. I really enjoyed this book. You know, I, I think it tackles an issue that has become increasingly um, more... Uh, more important for people as to whether you decide to vaccinate your children or not you know it, it, it's up to you isn't it at the end of the day what you choose to do personally I I do believe in vaccinations and I you know but I completely if you don't then that's your that's up to you that's what you believe but that that book was really good and it doesn't give an, an opinion either way by the way, on whether it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. But it's a good book and it does make you think a bit. So yeah, that's The Herd by Emily Edwards. Quite a quick read, really enjoyed it. Uh, so four out of five for me. And then uh, I've got two books on the go at the moment. Um, I'm reading the next one of the Matthew Bartholomew series by Susanna Gregory which is called An Unholy Alliance. 
I've literally just started it. So I'll let you know probably on my next video how that one goes. And I am reading an audio book, um, which I've also only just started. Uh, and I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to tell you about it in my next video because probably I'll have finished it by then. But it's a bit of a suspense type one. Um, and this one is set in Australia. So that's my that's my books that I've been reading. So yes, yeah, so I have read a few since I last saw you. Okay, guys, I think that is everything for me. So you've had all my whip update and life update, and so yeah, it's all kind of happening at the moment. Um, so it just remains for me. There was something else I was going to say. Oh yeah. One more thing for me, because I keep forgetting to do it. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple of uh, floss tubers that I've just started watching. Um, and I hadn't really seen either of them before. Um, so one of them is really quite popular already. And it, it's a duo and it's the Antique Needleworkers. Uh, and I'm really enjoying watching their floss tubes. They've, I think they've done three so far. Anyway, they do samplers and, and all that kind of thing. And, and yeah, really lovely to watch. And if you like a long video, they do do a long video. And the other one I haven't mentioned before, and she was really kind enough to give me a shout out on her last video, which is how I sort of discovered her really. And I had had a few people mention her, but I, I just hadn't been over to watch her for myself, is um, Lauren at the Cross Stitch Bunny. So um, yes, yeah, so I've just discovered Cross Stitch Bunny. And uh, thank you very much for the shout out that you gave me. And um, yeah, uh, thank you, I really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed going and watching your channel. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. I'll see you again, hopefully, in three weeks' time. Take care and happy stitching and see you all soon.